and this is about poetic devices does anybody know anything about poetic devices you can raise your hand and show me and those who are not on the screen can't do anything so you relax so i'll be putting you on the screen share and telling you what are these poetic devices let's see i'm just telling you in general all the poetic devices and then we will do the poetry specific as we do the poetry fine now <clears throat> the first one i told you is alliteration alliteration as i told you that day is kind of a tongue twister there is a lot of difference between various uh, alliterations we have to be understanding it very very carefully now understand the first one is alliteration alliteration is repetition of consonant sounds you know english is divided into the alphabets are divided into two way one is your vowels the other one is consonants you know what is a vowel vowel is a e i o u sounds and consonants are rest of the 21 letters but there are various sounds there are sounds are very different for five vowels you got around 20 sounds these sounds are called phonetics or syllables and for 21 consonants we have 24 sounds discuss that some day later when we do the language and how we speak you understand that then the consonant sound is repeated in the consecutive words words coming one after the other it's written anaphora it is actually alliteration here don't mind about it fine it is supposed to be alliteration it is called alliteration the examples of alliterations are peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers p p p p p p p p p p p p p this is a alliteration a good cook could cook as much cookies as a good cook would cook cookie cook cookies oh my god this is all called alliteration black bug bit a big black bear can keep repeating it will improve your sound quality also sheep should sleep in a shed sleep sheep should sleep in a shed you can keep repeating notion and try to speak this i saw a saw that could out saw any other saw i ever saw so all these are called alliterations what is alliteration when same sound like sir sound is coming again and again in consecutive words right this is called alliteration sir 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 there is a difference sir 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 this is alliteration sleep should shed sleep nahi sleep so this is a difference black black bug bit a big black bear peter piper picked a pack of pickled apples if such a thing is there this is called alliteration if you understood alliteration fine the next we have is a difficult poetic device which is called anaphora i'll give you more examples of alliteration as we move on don't bother about it and poetry specific the poems which we will be doing or poems which will be doing i will be giving you specific examples also don't bother about that anaphora the repeated use of word at the start of two or more consecutive lines like in a different poem frog and the nightingale which is studied which was studied in class 10 in the old syllabus it's not there now the lines are said the frog i tried to teach her but she was a stupid creature far too nervous far too dense far too prone to influence these far too far too is repeated again such a poetic device is called anaphora I'll give you more examples as we move on the next is more important anaphora is not that important because it's not used in 10th standard syllabus much fine right? now hyperbole is very very important some dictionaries you will see it's pronounced as hyperbole also it's hyperbole it's a greek word meaning overcasting or use of exaggeration to lay emphasis when you are exaggerating something exaggerating something giving big name about something fine right? like there's a poem ozymandias we say my name is ozymandias king of kings and if you have to say something great about yourself my name is superpower this is 
को शोइंग एग्जैजरेशन मुझसे ऊपर कोई नहीं You've seen Ramayana, Ram, Ravan, sorry. Ravan says exaggerated things. I am winner of three loks. <clears throat> three lok vijeta. Nobody can defeat me, isn't it? And that is that sort of a thing is hyperbole. When such a thing comes in literature, this is called a hyperbole. You understand? Hyperbole means over exaggeration. Exaggeration means kisi cheez ko bada chada ke bolna. When you're speaking something really. More effervescently, like you can normally do. Fine, so that is called an hyperbole. Then comes a very, very important poetic device, which is used quite often. It's metaphor. Metaphor is indirect comparison by highlighting a particular quality of two things. Well, in metaphor, you need two things, which are comparison compared with one common thing, like. I told you that day. He was tiger in the fight. He and tiger are compared together. Compared how? Compared how? In their bravery, in their courage. <clears throat> that is comparison. Fine. Such a comparison is called metaphor. It's quite used in the <coughs> poetry to explain comparison. Like in the poem "Frog in the Nightingale." The poet explains, "You are Mozart in disguise. Mozart is a very, very good guy. Is a very, very good musician from a country in Europe, Austria. And there's another country, Australia. We don't bother about what Australia. This is a country, Austria, which is adjacent to France, near around Germany, Belgium, France. Find it was also called Prussia before. Austria. The capital is Vienna." Anyways, this musician was Mozart in disguise. Disguise means disguise. You know what is disguise? When you are hiding your appearance, so you are Mozart in disguise. So she is comparing the frog. The in this poem, the nightingale is comparing the frog to Mozart, being being the very very good musician. So here the nightingale compares frog singing ability to that of musician Mozart. So hence this is a metaphor. Fine. He was a lion in the fight. You are, you are comparing a person to be a lion in a fight. He fought very, very bravely. Fine. His immense bravery is being compared to that of a lion or a tiger. That is a metaphor. The field and cloud are lovers. Here, the poet is comparing field and cloud with lovers. How they come together, create a rain. This is again a metaphor. Fine. So metaphor is a very very important poetic device. The poem which we did, the road not taken. I told you, the road is a metaphor for life. In the test also, the question was given. The road is a metaphor for life. Road is compared to life. Fine. And choices followed. So next is. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia again is used vividly in the poetry. Fine. It is sound effect. Now Vikas is to write a poem about his home, and he begins this poem that the bell rang, and how the bell rang rings. The bell rings, drin drin. Fine. The snake hisses, hus hus. The train moves. How does the train move? You can give the name of a sound, right? So such a sound, which is used to explain or express a sound, is called onomatopoeia in a poem. Like, once upon a time, a frog croaked away in Bengal bog. Croak is the sound it is making. Croaked away is the sound it is making. So that sort of a word, which is expressing a sound or explaining a sound, is called onomatopoeia. Check out the spellings of onomatopoeia. When O M A T O P O E I A, note it down. It's very important. Onomatopoeia. When something similar to the sound is explained, explanation of a sound or creation of a sound is explained is called onomatopoeia. Point. The hissing sound of the snake. That is onomatopoeia. Point. It roared and growled. This is again onomatopoeia. This. The next one is oxymoron. Oxymorons we use normally when we speak. 
<coughs> when we speak, we use so many oxymorons, but we don't know what is this oxymoron. So what is this oxymoron? And apparently contradictory terms of parent consumption <coughs> come together. Fine. What a dull sunlight. Today I went out a while ago. It is cloudy day. I said it's a dull sunlight. Dull and sunlight. Sunlight can be dull, right? But dull because there is cloud cover and the sun is not directly coming out. It's hazed. The sunlight is there, hence it's dull. Right? So that is when two contradictory means opposite. Things are coming together and expressing something. This is called a this is called oxymoron. Right? In poetry, it is used quite vividly. What is it? For example, there's a poem, Romeo Juliet. I don't have to tell who's written it. <clears throat> Why then, O oh, growling love, O oh, loving hate? Loving hate. Is it possible? Loving hate? Hmm? What a bright, dark picture. Right? How is it possible? Right? Isn't it? So that sort of a thing. It's called an oxymoron. You'll get many examples of oxymoron as we do. As we move on, I'm giving you more and more examples. Here the word growling and love are used together. Here also, growling love. How can love be growling? Growl is fight. Love is again. And then you talk about loving it. Both things. The use of oxymoron. Oh, heavy lightness. Serious humanity. Heavy lightness. Heavy and lightness, how both the things coming together, which are quite opposite to each other. Hence, this is an oxymoron. We have both the heavy and lightness written together, though they are opposite of each other. Heavy means which has more weight, and light means which has less weight. And both are coming together. Hence, it's called an oxymoron. So when you put two opposite things together, it is an oxymoron. So, you can give me some examples now. Christy, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, have you able to follow everything? Yes, sir. So, look, um, give me the example of oxymoron now. Any, anything which you speak in normal day life. Um, dark life. Dark life? My God. Dark light. La dark light, okay. Dark light, yeah. Dark light. You can use dark light in contrast with things. Something else? Angad, I'm putting you on mute, unmuting you. Yeah, speak something. Uh, Angad, any? Any star. Anji? Uh, uh, Any star. Night sky. Uh, Anji? Clear, clear. Any night sky. Night sky, shining night sky, yeah, shining night sky, shining with stars. Somehow you can use it as a oxymoron. Fine, good. Vikas, can you tell me? It's a dull star. Dull star, yes, dull star. Star we are dull we are. Fine, this is oxymoron. So you have understood what is an oxymoron. Fine. Now, next we move on to personification. A very very important. Again, I will. I'm keep telling you. This is important. This is important. All these are very, very important. Personification. Understand this personification very, very clearly. If you don't understand, please ask me. <clears throat> Giving human qualities to an object of non-living thing. Giving human quality to something non-living. This is personification. And personification, I tell you, is important. It's used vividly. Why? When a, in every second poem, personification is there. Fine. We have this road personified. We have got so much personified. So what is this? When any non-living thing is personified, giving human attributes, human qualities. Fine. A tree can think. Rain can shower blessings. The rain doesn't shower blessings. It only showers water. So water will do whatever water will do. But we say rain has showered its blessings. Means rain is having a human attribute to give you blessings, Zashirvat. So hence, rain is personified. Rain says, I will reach the earth and bless it with my 
beautiful pearls of wisdom so rain is personified in the one of the poems mirror mirror is speaking to human beings imagine mirror is saying i am silver and exact i have no preconceptions whatever i see i swallow immediately so mirror is is mirror real unreal or i mean sorry living or non living it's non living and mirror speak but in the so, poem so. the poetess has made the mirror speak as if mirror was a human being so such a quality is called personification what is it called personification the tree is speaking river is speaking mirror is speaking fine followed stars are speaking sun is speaking he rose from the see within from the sea and got us all because it was day who rose the sun rose fine sun was full of tireless heat and he did not let us move who did not let us move the sun personification fine many examples of personifications you've done this example in road not taken i'll just in a while i'll let you know what is the example so this is it next is repetition repetition is easier to understand hope you've understood what is personification Yes, repetition. Okay, repetition is very very easy when something is repeated again and again. When anything is repeated again and again, this is repetition. Repeating uh, the repetition of word or a line to lay emphasis. Why is something is repeated to lay emphasis? Why I keep telling every day? Join group, join group, join Google class. Fine. Don't make noise. Why? Because I want to emphasize that that don't do these things. Fine. It's good for you. It's bad for you. Why Modi ji keeps coming every day? Don't come out of your houses because he is trying to emphasize on the fact that if you don't come out of the houses, you will be safe. And if you come out of the houses, all the best to you. The country will be unsafe. Not only you. It's not about you. It's about the country. Fine. Everybody. The society. So that is called repetition of something. The usefulness of repetition in anything is for to lay emphasis. If a question comes, why is this line repeated again and again in the poem? The answer will be to lay emphasis. To lay emphasis. Chai kuch bhi ho. Emphasis means strength to give some stress on something. Its key importance ko batana. That is emphasis. Like, remember, there are various examples. Examples I'll tell you later on. Repetition. simile metaphor i did and now i put you with simile simile is another uh, poetic device which compares things use for comparison not for directly compared thing but in a simile the comparison comes with the words like or as like or as basic is same two things have to be compared there should be something in common between these two things right like we compared what he was tiger in the fight or lion in the fight whatever right so that is was metaphor but if you have to compare it like a using a simile then how will you use he was like a lion in the fight or he was like a tiger he fought like a tiger right indrajit fought like a tiger and lakshman ji fought like a god so that is it like and as when the use of like or as is there then the comparison is called simile then it is called simile and if there direct comparison is there without the use of like and as it is a metaphor it is a metaphor have you followed the metaphor. difference metaphor and simile have you followed the difference fine as cattle do fine so this is again the use of simile and metaphor irony now next one is irony irony again we use every day but we don't know what is irony irony is again contradiction <clears throat> this contradiction when something we have to speak with some sarcasm sarcasm is contradiction what actually is and what actually is not there right vikas has got a haircut for example aajkal to there no chance of a haircut but vikas has got a haircut he's got a tattoo also here and on that tattoo is written i am intelligent don't mind it with us fine and angad is giving him a comment angad knows he is looking a joker don't mind it because don't worry just giving example huh? angad knows that vikas is looking like a pure joker but he doesn't want to say directly he says wow vikas 
आज तो तू बिल्कुल स्मार्ट लग रहा है यू आर अ डूड टूडे एनी गिव्स अ कमेंट ऑन इंस्टाग्राम वाह डूड यू लुकिंग जबरदस्त जकास एंड वट एवर वर्ड यू यूज फाइन दैट इज क्वाइट आइरोनिकल विकास आल्सो सेज अ क्या है मजाक कर रहा है आई नो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ पर्सन आई एम लुकिंग लाइक नॉट लुकिंग लाइक अ डूड बट आई एम लुकिंग लाइक अ जोकर बट नोबडी इज डायरेक्टली telling me such a contradictory statement is called a it is called a ironic statement irony such, irony. such a poetic device is called irony what go examples and examples of irony for example a fire station burns down fire station which is supposed to douse the fire of the whole uh, area has burnt been burnt down there was no enough water fine so that is it our country is fireproof Our country is fireproof. It can catch fire, but it cannot burn. This is a statement made by Shakespeare in one of his uh, play, in *The Merchant of Venice*. He says, "Our country is fireproof. It can catch fire, but it cannot can never burn." Means fire can finish you, but it can't burn you. It won't end you. It will rise up again and come back to its hills. that is the meaning fine so irony we use irony so many times have you understood irony very simple fine okay yes, then i i told you the first body device was alliteration remember the first one alliteration hmm patty butler butter 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 butter, butter was so bitter that you got some better better taste a bit better better i gave you this tongue twister also the other day fine and what was the shortest tongue twister i gave you truly rural did you try that truly rural hmm so now there is a difference there is a difference now if in a sentence the vowels are repeated again and again it is an assonance and if consonants are repeated again and again it is a consonance there is a difference between assonance consonants and alliteration i'll stress on that but you don't bother about this if you don't understand not a problem i again repeat poetic poetry specific poetic devices i'll be explain it to you and as we move on you will be able to understand each one clearly when we do it with the poems we have done fine assonance is used in the repetition of vowel sounds vowels you know a e i o u in quick succession though as far that the passing and in somewhere ages and ages hence somewhere ages and ages hence a and a this is assonance so consonance is when consonant sounds are repeated yellow wood two roads diverging in a yellow wood the do as far as the passing there the and the this is consonant do as far as the passing in somewhere in ages it is sense so that is assonance and consonance i'll give you more examples here of the poetry what we have done the poetry specific the road not taken you able to see it now The analysis of literary devices in road not taken. Hmm? Are you able to see? Dikh raha hai? Vikas? Okay, Vikas, what are you reading? So, irony one of the most commonly used. Poetic devices. Are you reading irony only? Now what are you reading? Okay, now the screen sharing is gone. Give you the screen sharing again. Yeah, now you able to read? Analysis of literary devices in the road not taken. Okay, fast quickly we'll do because we have got a session of two minutes left because this Zoom is going to expire in forty minutes. Metaphor is used here. There are many metaphors in the poem, like road. <coughs> Fork in the road and yellow woods. The road in the poem is the metaphor for life, while fork on the road metaphorically represents the choices we make to determine the course of our lives. Similarly, yellow woods are the metaphor of making decisions during the hard times of person's life. These metaphors used in this poem emphasize the importance of different decisions we make. Fine. So metaphors. Road is a metaphor. It's showing you the choices. Then imagery. I didn't tell you about imagery. Imagery is when something, some image is being explained to you about something like make readers and things through their 
five senses five senses you know sight smell sound plain something like yellow woods you can understand yellow woods means autumn signs and all this okay. right navigate two roads forking ground is and simile what is simile as just as fair simile used is as just as fair as just as fair is simile used you understand simile now comparison fair means good fair means good then assonance repetition of vowels i have told you as far as somewhere ages and ages hence this is assonance somewhere ages and ages hence is assonance consonant is go as far as passing there go as far as passing there now personification what is personification personified road in the third line of the second stanza he says because it was grassy and wanted wear as if the road is human and that it wants to wear and tear as the road was human he is given human attributes to the road itself that's it and parallelism again when you parallelism when two things are compared to be parallel phrases or sentences or grammatical forms something is parallel that's what it is there is it so these are the poetic devices which we have used for road not taken don't worry i'll be sending this on the whatsapp the entire poetic devices you can read it again and anybody having any doubt please come back to me fine tomorrow there will be no class yes sir fine